Hello and welcome to my tutorial on making sprites for the Commodore 64. Back in the old days you'd have used a pencil and an eraser and some graph paper, well some paper laid out like so. So what we have here is 21 lines down by 24 lines across. So that, if you multiply them together, gives you 504, so 504 bits. And if you divide that by 8, you'll see that it's 63, well it's actually 64, um, as there are the 0 also counts as a bit. So we've got 0 to 63, hence 64 bytes uh, per sprite. Now, by the magic and wonder of video editing, what I'm going to do is create a sprite on paper by shading in individual cells, and then I'll show you how we turn that um, that picture, that the, the sprite on, on paper, into an actual sprite on the C64. So here we go. And we're done. Hey, smiley face. So if I just zoom in a bit closer here, what you can see is that the um, width ways, the, the grid is, is split into three columns, each one by wide if you like, one 8-bit byte wide. So what we have to do here is for each column we'll have a value, we turn it into a decimal value. So you can see on the top here no bits are shaded in at all. So on the right over here we've got these three columns, there'll be a zero in all of them because no bits are set. But for the second column, sorry the second row, the first column again has zero bits set, but the middle one has 64, 32, 16, 8, 4 and 2 set. So what we do is we sum those together, which gives 126, a zero in the third column again, and then we move down, and this time we have a one, just the just one bit one set in the first column, bit 128 and one set in the middle column, and just bit 128 set in the third column. So we have one, 129, and 128. Okay, I'm going to speed this up a bit, so you don't have to watch me complete the whole thing. We go row by row. It helps to have a calculator handy. Now, if like me, back in the 80s, you used to painstakingly type in all these data statements and um, with just random digits after them and wonder where they come from. Well, no, you're not. Heading on over to the C64 now, I'm going to write a quick program that allows us to enter that sprite data and display it. So familiar to, to many will be this first command on line on line 10, print character 147 to clear the screen. Then I'm going to set up a loop, the variable sprite, and in that I'm going to put the value, the memory location, 12,800, and um, to 12,863, we'll set at 64 bytes, um, which is how big a sprite is, and I'm going to just poke zeros into that throughout the loop to clear that of any garbage data that will be in there, and there will be something in there um, when you first boot up the computer. So the next line, 30, um, I'm just setting the sprite pointer, of sprite 0, to 12,800, um, if you multiply 200 by 8, that's what the number you would get. And line 40, I'm setting the X and Y coordinate of the sprite so that it doesn't display off screen and you think there's a problem. Um, then I'm going to set in line 50 uh, sprite 0 to on to being displayed. And then here's another loop, again using a variable called sprite, same memory locations. But here you'll see before the poke statement, there's an input. So it's going to ask the user for input and it's going to poke that input into the memory locations. Um, yeah, starting at 12,800, each line here you'll see is a memory location, um, a value being stored into a memory location. And you can actually see, as the sprite is set to on, you can see the sprite being built before your eyes there. Um, I mean, what you would do in a, in a program or in a game is you'd enter all this data, well, it'd be data statements anyway, you'd have all this pre-written data statements that are read into the memory, and then you'd turn the sprite on and it would instantly appear completely filled. But doing it this way, Certainly back in the old days when you had to make a sprite via, via graph paper, I would be forever making mistakes in my haste to get it finished. And doing it this way allows you to build the sprite in real time. And if there's any mistakes, and there's one there, um, you can see them and you'll know exactly what line it's on on the, uh, on the paper um, and be able to go, go back and edit it you know, to get it just right. So what you can see there is the, the eyebrows are kind of broken on the right hand side of the face as you look at it um, and also the eyes only seem to be one pixel wide and they should be two so <laughs> obviously rushed it but um, I'm going to speed this up a little now and you'll see um, you'll, you'll see the finished article and I'll talk a bit more more about it so after we've finished inputting the data and we're coming to the end of that for loop 
we are just uh, returned to the ready prompt in basic. Um, what I'm going to demonstrate here is that there, there are other things you can do with the Commodore 64 to manipulate sprites as well as setting the X and Y coordinate. There are also memory locations for each sprite where if you fill them with a 1, you can double the X and the, and the Y width and height of the sprite. And that might make it easier just to see you know, where you've gone wrong. If there's a mistake, it just kind of zooms in a little bit there. There are various other things that you can do, which I won't go into now. Um, but what about those data statements? So what I'm going to do here is just write another quick program. And um, if you've not seen it before, the question mark there gets transformed by the basic interpreter, interpreter on the Commodore 64 into a print statement. So if I were to list the program now, uh, that, that question mark would be replaced with print. Now, as print is a really common um, command that you use in basic, you know, I guess the developers had the foresight to um, be able to switch it out for a, a symbol to make typing them a lot quicker. So this program is going to be very similar to the the first one, except instead of for loops, we're going to use um, data statements. So um, I still use a for loop here just to um, read the data in, but you can see there's a, instead of an input A, there's a read A statement there, and we're going to poke each address in you know, the n variable, um, which will be a memory location, because you're using poke, you know, it, it pokes it into that memory location. I'm going to fill that with the data that's going to read in from the data statements below. So you can see on line 10, we clear the screen of text, and we go to the subroutine routine starting at line 100, which I'm typing in now, um, which will be all the data statements that you know just look like unintelligible nonsense, really, to anyone. Even the you know even I created the sprite and I wouldn't have a clue what that what the, what the data statements will transform into. Luckily, the Commodore 64 does. So if I speed this up a little here, what we're going to see is once I've entered all the data into the data statements and run the program is another source of great frustration for all Commodore 64 developers, and that is an error. In this instance, it means I've missed at least one digit um, from the data statements because it was expecting more data than was actually input. Oh dear. So there's an error. It says error in 40, so there's you know not enough data being read into the in that for loop. Um, uh, I quickly list the program, see if I can spot the error. Spoiler alert, I can't. And of course, in the edit, it's immediately obvious that there are four bytes of data missing from line 130. Just a couple of things I wanted to point out here. You can see on line 10 that question mark has been replaced by print. There was no space after the question mark, so there's no space after the word print now. Um, and that doesn't matter at all to the, the basic interpreter. It's just for human readability that we have the spaces in there. And the funny little character after the L there, instead of typing list, that's L and then shift and I on the Commodore 64. Press enter and that will that will list the program for you. It's just a little shortcut. And you can do the same with run. You type in R and then shift and U, press enter and it will run the program. Not much of a saving, but there it is. So what I'm doing here is I'm copy, I've copied and pasted in the sprite data from the UFO game. So I've pasted in the sprite data for the actual UFO sprite, and the the line for the sprite data in that program starts at 1110, so I've changed the go sub, and now I'm just um, deleting lines 100 to 140. Now you can see when running the program, there's the UFO sprite being displayed, and there's the, the program missing again. There's an error saying so return without go sub. I don't know why that is, I'll have to look at that in more detail, but the result is what we what we expected. A sprite is, is you know put onto the screen, and if I remove that return statement, it runs just fine. Okay, so I've got our sprite on the screen, and what I'm going to do now is just um, type in a few poke statements into the interpreter just to manipulate the sprite a little. So here I'm doubling the y or the height of the sprite, and now the width of the sprite. Um, so if you wanted a really big UFO, there you go. You, that's an easy way to do it, and also just. Yeah, other poke statements and move it around the screen. You can see here that the text just goes behind the sprite. It's completely independent. Nothing you type on the screen will, will interfere with that sprite at all unless you type a poke statement to turn it off. So just changing the X and Y values here. It'll also show that you can change the, the, the border color here. Um, there you go to black and the background of the of the page. Um, see, I've just gone up there and gone over it and changed the value and press enter again rather than type out the whole poke statement. You can do that. Change the text color to white and let's list the listing just to, to show the results of that. Now that's been a lovely walk down memory lane, but fortunately things have progressed a little in the 30 plus years since we had to painstakingly enter data statements line by line. Spritemate.com 
and this is it. This is what you're presented with when you visit the site. So it's like straight into the web application. And this makes designing sprites for the Commodore 64 a doddle. It really does. It eliminates any of the human error in calculating the data statements and in inputting those. So what you'll, what you'll get out of this, and it can export to binary format if you're, if you're programming in, a, in assembler and hexadecimal as well, um, as well as the basic. Now what you'll get when you save it as a basic file for the Commodore 64 is code that you can literally copy and paste into an emulator on a real C64 that will run and display the sprites on the screen. Um, and when you get to seeing the listing later, after I've, I've produced a, a couple of sprites, you'll see those data statements and, and the familiar poke statements and, and just see how um, well, how familiar it should be to you by now. So a quick overview, I mean, this is, if you thought Microsoft Paint was a simple paint program, this takes that a level lower. So it's even uh, an even shorter learning curve, really. Um, so you have the tools on the left, you've got drop down menus if you prefer, but everything on those drop down menus is displayed in front of you here. You've got the toolbar, which lets you save and load sprites. So you can save them in the Sprite Mate native format um, if you're not finished on them, or if you've got a sprite set that you're not quite finished with. So you can just create multiple sprites in the, the C64, allows for up to eight hardware sprites. Um, so you can create multiple sprites here, save them all off, reload them to, to touch them up or edit them, change them, finish them off. That's really good, really good feature. Um, so you can have up to eight, as I say, and they can be individual sprites, so player sprites, enemy sprites, missiles, um, what have you. Or you could have multiple multiple frames of, of, of one character, if you like. So they'll each be an individual sprite, and you can cycle through them um, to create sprite animation. I won't be covering that in this uh, in this video, though. I'll save that for another time. So we've got undo and redo, which are pretty self-explanatory. Move just lets you move the whole canvas around. So if I was to draw something, be unhappy with its uh, position, I can move it around like that. Erase, as you might expect, just undoes what you've done. And fill, flood fills a closed area. So uh, let's undo that. Go to draw. Now you see there's quite a palette here, um, but only two colours. Well, one really is, is available to us. However, the Commodore 64 does in fact have two sprite modes. High res, which is what I've been using so far, and that allows just one color, and the other one being transparent. So if I were to draw something on here and that be my sprite, everything that isn't white would be see-through. So the background of whatever was being displayed behind it would, would show through. So you need to be mindful of that. Okay, let's undo that. Um, but as we know, the Commodore 64 can display, yeah, it's a color computer, it can display colorful sprites. Um, and the two, so there's another sprite mode, the multicolor mode or low res mode, and you can switch to that by clicking here. And when we do that, you'll notice that the, the cells horizontally are halved or they're merged. So every two cells are merged. And the reason for that is the way the Commodore 64 handles color um, sprites, color sprites, is that uh, in reality, for, for us drawing, we can only, yeah, you know, this is what we've got left now to, to, to play with, okay? But the reality of what is going on in the Commodore 64 is there are still there are now instead of like you know, one cell per bit, there are now two bits per uh, per cell or two bytes uh, really. So in the leftmost one, so if you imagine it still looks like that, in this leftmost most one will just be uh, a one or a zero telling the you know the C64 telling the VIC chip whether there's something to display or not, and in the rightmost cell will be a value which will denote the color. So even in multicolor mode, there are still some limitations. Um, each sprite can have an individual color that's individual to that sprite, and, and then there's multicolor one and two which have to be shared amongst all sprites. Now, if I were just to show you a quick sprite here, let's draw a crude face that's going to be a going to be our sprite. So, a crude smiley face, a bit lopsided, but there we go. Now, it's pretty not a great example because um, it's not very detailed, so be really matter if it's in low res but if I do change it into low res you can quite clearly see although you can still kind of make out that it's a face we've lost a lot of the definition there it'd be much better obviously if we could still have a sprite a uh, multicolor sprite in high res uh, mode so there is a way around this um, that developers found quite early on and that's if you create two sprites you might see where I'm going with this you can probably work out what I'm, what I'm about to do uh, let's choose this brown color all would help. Now, if I just jam all this full, now I can't use fill um, because it's only a layer showing the other sprite behind it. So it, it would just it would fill the entire entire canvas, the entire square. 
so that I probably should have done it in that mode. So as you can see, I just noticed something here. Raise that one. As you can see, we now have a, a brown face. And we can go a bit further with that. Okay, so in multicolor mode, I can make some changes here. So I might want to have pink for the lips, if you like, and this blue color for the eyes. And what you can see here would be the actual output. You know, if we overlay the sprites in the, on the C64, you can actually have a, a kind of high res sprite, a detailed sprite, but with, with color. So that's going to do it for now. I think that matters when we when we export it. I'm going to click save. Oh, we're going to save it as basic. There we go. That's that done. And I'm going to go over now to the the text editor just to run through the code that's been produced, and then we're going to import that or paste it into the C64 and play around with it. Okay. So this is the code that SpriteMate has just produced for us by saving it as a .bas file. So it's just opened up in the text editor, and you can see here some pretty familiar uh, commands. Um, print character 147 to clear the screen of all text. A couple of other print statements, and then we set up the uh, the sprites as multicolor. This one uh, doesn't. We've only created the two sprites, so we don't need to be displaying all sprites. But if you put the max value 255, so setting all bits to one in an 8-bit byte memory location 53269, all sprites are displayed. Um, this is a, a four statement similar to what we've used you've seen previously. So we have got two sprites, haven't we? So 64 times two is 128. So including zero up to one, two, seven is 128 bytes. So we're gonna read in the data statements and here are the two, two sprites. So it's produced the data statements for us, like I say, re reducing any chance of human error there. So it also includes some remark lines as well. So you know what we're, what we're producing. We've got a single color sprite here. So this section here will be our, our high res part and then our, our colored part. And the, these pokes don't just deal with um, you know, the colors and the X and Y positions and the height of the sprites on the screen. So let's copy that over and then play around with it. Play around with it a bit. Now you'll see right away that the Y coordinates are the same, but the X's are offset, just so you can see both sprites side by side, you know, before we overlay them. So you can see that the high risk sprite is definitely more detailed than the low risk sprite, but this one's see-through, and this one's just all blocky, so they're not going to impress much on their own. And if I list the program, and I'm just going to, here's a little tip. If if you if the program's too big to fit on the screen and it scrolls and you might miss the part that you want, you can ask the C64 to start from a line number and go to a line number. Or you can start with a dash or hyphen, and that will start from the start of the program up to that line number, and the other way around as well. You can go from line 10, you know, or line 100, rather, all the way to the end. So I'm going to list from the start to 200, so we've only got the data statements on the screen. And again, you notice that text and sprites are completely oblivious to each other. They don't affect, they don't affect each other. But that is why we clear the screen, see the 10, print character 147, just to make sure there's nothing in the way, really. Um, okay, so if I change this offset to the X position, 44 to 92, so it matches the other sprite as we run it. Ta-da! There you can see now, obviously it's very basic and very crude, um, but you can see there, um, that's how you could kind of create a higher res looking sprite by using two, uh, multi high res multicolor sprite I should say. Now let's have a bit more fun with this, so we could double the height and width, but if I just do that, I believe I'm only doing it for one sprite. Yep, of course. So what I shall do is get this right, will be five. Let's see. It would not. Okay. Before I embarrass myself any further. So all sprites would be double height and width, and rather than mess about until I got just those two. 
And that wraps up another video. If you've enjoyed this video, please do leave a like and consider subscribing. And if you have any questions at all, please do leave them in the comments below and I'll come back and reply to each one.